For a lot of people, going to the gym might not always work. Sometimes you're just really embarrassed about your body and you don't want to be seen in a gym. At other times, maybe you just don't like gyms. Maybe you have anxiety when it comes to going out in public. Maybe you just don't want to get sweaty in front of other people. Maybe you're a girl and you're tired of getting hit on by creepy guys. Maybe you're a creepy guy and you're tired of scaring away girls. In the interview today with John Hamm, you're going to find out that you have options and we're also going to talk about the best ways to get into shape without having to go to a gym. Enjoy. Today we are talking to John Hamm. John's been a personal trainer since 2001 and before that he was a competitive gymnast for nearly his whole life. He runs a personal training company called Fitness on the Run, uh, which specializes in training clients from their homes. He also runs a popular YouTube channel with nearly a million views and over 200 videos covering all aspects of health and fitness. John, it's excellent to have you here today, man. How are you doing? Thank you, Spencer. I'm doing, um, doing well. Doing well. All right. So today we're going to be talking about training at home. Right. So first thing, what do you think are some of the advantages to training at home? Well, I definitely would say um, it saves you a bunch of time and it's it's more likely that you're going to be more consistent if you train at home as opposed to going to a gym. I went to a gym for years, and when I got a job and I started getting busy and working, I found myself not able to take the 20 minutes to drive there, 20 minutes to drive back, mm -hmm. get an hour workout in. I just wasn't doing it. And so as soon as I was able to, I definitely – first thing I did was set up a home gym or a space to work out in the gym or – at home uh, as my gym and there's no better decision I've made um, than doing that for sure okay if someone's watching this and, and they're interested in training at home but there isn't someone like you in their area where should they start what what can they do today um, well <laughs> I check out my YouTube channel for one um, I try to bring my experience, what I've been doing with people in their home over the last 10 years or so, and put it on the channel. And it could be some people are going to be more advanced than others, of course, but get some little pieces of equipment that are really easy to set up in the home, some dumbbells, a ball, a suspension trainer. And I'm a huge fan of the Indo board for balance training. Um, those are like my – must have for my clients when I go to their home and okay. I would ex expect that you know for the people at home that want to get started that would be the first place to go okay if someone hasn't heard of an indo board what exactly is that uh, it's a balance trainer for almost like a, a wobble board but they make a few different versions of it and they do different things one has a roller um, that the board goes on and wobbles back and forth and the other one is a cushion, an air cushion that uh, you blow up and you can put more or less air in to make it more or less stable. And standing on the board and doing your exercises while standing on the board makes you use more muscles. It increases your proprioception, makes you balance better, and gets you to be more aware of your surroundings. And I've been doing a lot of stand-up paddle surfing, and i got to tell you there are days where it's big out there, big, huge waves, and I have these moments where it's like, holy crap, had I not been training on that indo board, I would have been, you know, face first and have fallen. But the fact that if you train on the board and uh, you do your exercises on a regular basis on the board, it makes your balance way better. Okay. And that's my practical application is paddle surfing. And when someone's on that, they're probably activating their core like crazy. That's right. So just a, a, a little note about technique with that. Should they be kind of sucking in their stomach or trying to make their pelvic bones touch to really squeeze their abs during exercises on the endo board? Is that important? Yeah, you want to you kind of like draw your abs in. Uh, you don't yeah. necessarily want to change your pelvic um, angle, though. You want to keep it kind of neutral. Okay. Um, but drawing in the abs is a definite must. Also, you could do push-ups on with your hands on the board. That makes it a little more unstable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the technique there is there. There's tons of stuff on, on YouTube about it. Uh, lots of different exercises to do on that cushion, even balancing on one foot, doing one-leg squats on there. Um, for me, I don't, uh, you didn't talk about it yet, but 
I was a, when I was a gymnast, I actually felt the high bar and broke my neck. So doing weighted squats on my shoulders really, really hurts my neck, and I'll end up with tingly fingers. Uh, so yeah, even though I've had surgery twice, um, so I cannot put anything on my shoulders that weighs. You know, I could put dumbbells and hold them in my hands, but as soon as I put like a bar mm-hmm. on my back, it hurts. And so doing balance stuff actually is a way to increase the muscle activation, more um, more focus on the actual contractions and doing more as opposed to just adding more and more weight. Okay. And I, that really seems to to work well. You know what, that's an important side point too because I think a lot of people, they might follow some plan that they find online like strong lifts and it says to do deadlifts and squats and stuff like that but they may have pre-existing injuries and it may just make things worse for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I'm a perfect case of that too and um, yeah, you got to be careful. Do you think if someone's training at home that a routine is best or should they just do what they feel like that day? Uh, I like to write out a little plan, a little schedule of what I'm going to do for the week. Um, and depending on the weather actually is <laughs> depends on whether or not I get that done or not. So you want to be adaptable. If I can, I'm always going to get out on the mountain bike. If mm-hmm. the weather's bad, then I'll go into the gym and do something. But uh, or if the waves are good, I'll cut out the training for the day uh, on the weights, and I'll get out in the water and go surf. So I try to plan as much as I can, but there's other things that take priority, and that's uh, now that I'm not doing gymnastics anymore, uh, I really like trying everything. And the stuff I do in the gym is meant to make me better at all the other stuff that I want to do good and be better at. Um, so I try to tailor my training toward my mountain biking or my paddle surfing um, to make me better at those. Okay. But, yeah, following a plan is is important, I think, unless you have to be adaptable. Yeah. It, it kind of depends on the person, I, I think, but it, it really seems like a plan works best for most people because – you know, they'll always find a way to make an excuse if they don't have a, a plan in, in place. Absolutely. Or a buddy that's going to do the plan with you. That that helps. Um, actually, one of my clients, most of my clients right now are, are between 50 and 75 years old. Um, but I do have one really fit 43-year-old that uh, has been asking me to work out with him. And that's actually been fun for me. Uh, mm-hmm. We push each other and... Uh, that's been a blast. As a as a side note, we did some at Body Hack. We did some surveys and questionnaires with people to find out, you know, what helps someone get into their best shape. And and people that go to the gym and they quit after a couple of weeks, you know, what's the difference between the people that stick to it and those that quit? And having some social person there to work out with was one of the biggest factors in in success. I, I totally believe it. I totally believe it. And my clients tell me even like, dude, if you're not coming, I'm not doing it. I'm like, come on, man, you got to do it. But still, I see it. When I go on vacation, I come back, it's like 80-20. 80% did nothing or did very little, and 20% actually did something or did really well, um, which is kind of a bad thing. <laughs> but it's good job security, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's just how we work as humans, I guess, eh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So we already talked a little bit about the Indo board, which you, I'm guessing you'd say that's probably one of the number one things people should pick up if they're training at home. What do you think are some of the other best bang for the buck exercises? Exercises, um, I would say like squat, squat thrusters, squat and shoulder press, and I love to do those on the Indo board. Mm-hmm. Lots of muscle activation without the huge load on the spine. Um, that would probably be like my number one. I think that just works a little bit of everything and or a lot of everything. Uh, aside from that, pull-ups, dips, uh, push-ups, and if you could do a suspended push-up with a tuck or a one-leg suspended push-up with a tuck, 
uh, with a TRX or hand trainer or pulley system, whatever you might have or have access to. I think that is really good for your core. Um, that's Those would be my top for sure. If someone doesn't know what a suspended push-up is, is that where your arms are in the TRX rings or, or something like that, or your feet are in the air, or feet are in the in the in the straps, and your okay. feet, your hands would be on the ground, mm -hmm. or on perfect push-ups, or even in no board. But the suspended part is where your feet are kind of hanging from the the straps. Okay, and that that really activates the core, I suppose. Absolutely. It takes everything you can so you don't arch your back. Mm -hmm. Or even better, if you could put one foot in the straps, then you have some torsional strain on the spine without a compression strain. Um, so that is really, really good for your, for your core. Okay, cool. Very good for your low back. Um, it's funny, like, I don't know how old a lot of your, your followers are, but... Uh, I train a lot of people that are older, 50 to 70, and if they've had a desk job or they let their core go, it's like the first thing is damage control. How bad is their back? Mm -hmm. And first thing we do is get them doing planks on the ball, holding up their body, uh, and part of that is doing suspended push-ups and suspension training uh, where their core really has to work. Okay. So that's for, for older individuals or someone that hasn't trained in a while, that's probably a place where they should start is strengthening their core. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, cool. Uh, maybe, maybe they don't need to do push-ups right away, but um, you, that's one of the things that we work toward. And you know, next thing you know, you have the 60-year-olds that are total badasses doing really difficult stuff on those pieces of equipment. Right on. Okay, do you think there are certain ways to emphasize goals that your clients may have, such as gaining muscle or losing fat? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, number one is going to be diet, <laughs> especially for fat loss. Um, I'm a big fan of not eating junk food, especially mm -hmm. sugar, and trying to go – Eat real food, not processed, um, lots of fruits and vegetables, and if you can do it, organic would always be the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, and for muscle building, um, you got to eat, man. you got to eat, 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 and eat good sources of fuel that have lots of nutrients, and that's going to also include a lot of the fruits and vegetables and nuts, um, I just stay away from dairy, and I don't have a sweet tooth, and I hope I can get my clients off all the, the sweets, too. That's been a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, sodas, that's pretty easy for most people to quit sodas, I think. At least that's what they tell me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I definitely would say eat real food, um, stay away from the junk food, and especially the sugars and candy and processed foods. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because there's a lot of debate in the diet community about the South Beach diet, the Atkins diet, the paleo diet, vegan, vegetarian diet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it seems like almost all of them would agree that you need to eat real food and cut out the crap. So Yeah, you know, I, I don't subscribe to any uh, one, I call them tribe. Mm -hmm. um, I think that all of them have some common um, commonalities, like we just talked, like you just said. Eat real food. Eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, stay away from sugar. I don't see any diets that are out there saying go eat candy, or sodas are good for you, or you know go eat a bunch of ho hos. Um, they're just, it's just not there. But they all will say, don't eat sugar. Eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. If you can eat organic, eat organic, eat real sources of food. Um, the vegans and the paleos will differ on whether you eat meat or not. Uh, I do eat meat, and I don't have a problem with it. I try to eat good sources of meat, um, but I don't think it's going to give me cancer. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I think balance is important, too, and you have to live life, and you're going to have days where you don't do, do as good as you like and days that you do better, and those days you pat yourself on, on the back and you say, good job, 
Um, and the days you don't do as good, you try to do better the next day. Mm -hmm. And I just interviewed a, a guy named Jesse Stilwell who lost almost 300 pounds. And wow. what he was saying was... It's a lot of weight. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, he, he did an amazing job. What he said was he would have bad days occasionally, but he didn't beat himself up over it and just kept moving forward to the next day. I think that's really key for people to do. Yeah, and um, along that same line, I've had a, a lot of success with people doing food journals. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to know what you're eating, write it down because somehow the junk food, we just forget about it and we write it off, I like to say. But if you keep an actual food journal and there's plenty of apps on your phone or you know web apps that you can do, it is the best experience, even if you do it for a week, you're going to learn a lot about your habits. And having good habits and starting the day off with something right and then you know following up on that and writing it down is a very educational process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I think that's one of the best that I've had a lot of success with my clients on. Yeah, so anecdotal success. And then I also believe there's been some studies on that that have found it to be successful in, in the scientific community. So, yeah, that's that's great advice. So what if someone finds training to be boring? They don't want to be inside their house doing push-ups and sit-ups and squats. You know, this is one of the things where I try to get people outside. And you can do a lot of workout, at least in Southern California. I know it's different. You're in Canada, right? Toronto, yeah. Um, we have winter here. Yeah, so if it were, if I were, and I lived in Illinois for six years where it was cold and it got snowy, but mm -hmm. uh, and there were no mountains. I don't know if there's mountains in Ontario, but <clears throat> I would try to pick up outdoor sports, even in the winter, skiing, snowshoeing, or I don't know, what do you guys do out there in Canada? I mean, yeah, uh, skiing, hockey. Ice fishing. Ice no. fishing. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. Um, no, no but, we do. We, we ice fish, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. I, I mean, outdoor activities, i got to say, you know, you're breathing fresh air. That is motivating to me. I ride mountain bikes with my neighbors uh, two days a week, sometimes more. Um, getting together with people is really important, like we talked about. But I think getting outside and then the, the inside stuff is a supplement to doing the outside, um, to me at least. I try to get in the gym at home two to three days a week. And the rest of the time, I might get out. And it might be going to the park and doing a circuit at the park where they have pull-up bars and dip bars set up and mm -hmm. or monkey bars. You know, I'll go harass the kids. Um, but that is motivating to me, and I have fun with it. And uh, I don't take it too seriously. Uh, you know, there's always going to be someone that's stronger or faster or whatever. I just go out there and put a smile on my face and – after breaking my neck and going through not almost not walking again, I'm just grateful and happy that I'm able to enjoy life. And that's the truth. And I count every day as a blessing. And that sounds cheesy, but you know what? Like, not everybody can say that. And there's a lot of people out there with bum knees and bum back and bum shoulders and they use that as an excuse not to move, when in reality they should be moving more to get blood flowing. And and using their body makes them stronger and happy. And, you know, it actually is good for your brain. It makes you smarter. Um, there's a lot of benefits, and they, they kind of feed on each other. I really do believe this. There, a lot of my, I, I guess, best ideas and thoughts come from when I'm riding the bike. Mm -hmm. I listen to books in my ears when I ride the bike and it makes you think and all the blood flow and that's when your ideas come and you get passionate and happy about life. And I wouldn't have that if I weren't was just sitting behind a desk all day or just, you know, not doing the work. It, it, it doesn't become work anymore. It becomes fun and it feeds on how you live your life and, and how your passions evolve and, I don't know, maybe I'm sounding like a, a, a preacher now, but I, I think it's, and I tell my clients this too, you got to get out and move and get the blood flowing and that's when all your best stuff happens and mm -hmm. makes you well, happy. As soon as people commit to some sort of plan where they're exercising regularly, 
they suddenly realize all the benefits they were missing out on. And it's, it's like night or day with, with some of the people I've trained and I've known. So yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. totally right. You're totally right. Um, and we can't take that for granted when you have it, you need to work harder to keep it mm. and smarter. So you don't do something stupid. Like, uh, I broke a couple ribs paddle surfing, uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, that set me back, and it's not a fun injury. Um, I have a client right now that just fell on his mountain bike two weeks ago and uh, broke his collarbone in five spots and cracked six ribs, well, broke four and cracked two. Had to get airlifted out of the mountains. Um, that wasn't good. Um, and, you know, we got to be careful. we got to save, be safe, and we can't take it for granted because it could be gone tomorrow, you know. Um, yeah. What about people that say they just don't have time to train? Yeah, that's one I don't have any, any sympathy for. I, I kind of say you don't have time not to train. And whether it means you get up at four in the morning, um, so what? Do it. There's always, you have to make the time and you have to schedule it as an important date with yourself and you just have to do it. And if you work out at home or at the gym, it doesn't matter. You have to find what's going to work for you. But it's got to be part of your daily activity, whether, you know, it's just like brushing your teeth. You have to get something in. And you don't have time not to. Uh, life's too short mm -hmm. uh, to not do your best to take care of yourself. And That's I find my answer. Not very sympathetic to, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry you're busy, but you know what? Suck it up. Do it. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. I find that with a, with a lot of people, too. They'll initially say they don't have time, but as soon as they start to make time for it and they do it regularly, like we were talking about a, a minute ago, the benefits come in, and then they're more productive throughout their day. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, and I like to you know, tell people to start working out first thing in the morning and get it done with, get it over with, uh, all the research I've read says that people that work out in the morning get better results. And I think it's simply for the fact that they just get it in. And 99% of the battle is doing it. Um, you know, if you're consistent in the afternoon, by all means, do it in the afternoon. If you have time, cut away, do it. Uh, but the important thing is to just do it. You don't have to set the land speed record or heaviest lift record every time you lift or every time you work out. You're not always going to be your best. You're not always going to feel the best. But the important thing is just to do it. And even if you have to go through the motions, um, go through the motions. You'll feel better afterwards. Mm -hmm. So with staying motivated, one thing I recently read, uh, I believe a Harvard professor or something, someone was doing this, is they'd go to bed in their gym clothes and they'd have all their stuff right beside their bed, their gym shoes and their bag and everything. So they'd get out of bed They'd oh, set their feet one. on the floor and they just, they knew it was so easy to put on their shoes and go to the gym that that's what they did. And it helped instill that habit. Do you have any other motivational strategies or tips for people? Um, actually, you know, yeah, I'm a big believer in self-talk and being positive with yourself. And it sounds funny, but I use this a lot in gymnastics and in gymnastics, you fail a lot. You fall, you miss, and it takes a lot to be perfect, and that's the goal is to be perfect. Well, 99% of the time you're not going to be perfect until you develop the skills to be perfect at one thing. And when you fail, it's important to follow that failure up with, it's not like me, uh, like a mental process, it's not like me. And when you do win and when you do something good, you say, that's like me. That's It's like me to do that correctly. And every time you do something <clears throat> to make it a habit, following it up with positive self-talk is a good thing. And even when you do something wrong, following it up with that's not like me, you shrug it off and you move on to the next, that's equally as important. So I actually think that has a lot to do with motivation too. Staying motivated and staying positive and having good self-talk, talking yourself up, telling yourself you can do it when – uh, you don't want to, it all helps. And that's a good little trick, though, I like about getting ready for the gym the, next, the night before. Um, 
that's important. I do the same thing for work because I'm up at 4.15 every day. Mm-hmm. I get all my clothes out ready to go for work. I set the coffee pot so that I have that first cup of coffee is like I wake up and I, I can't wait for it. It's like smells good. That, yeah. It gets me out of bed. And say what you want about coffee. I'm drinking it at 4.15, okay? Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I think that <clears throat> staying positive keeps you motivated. Having friends that are encouraging and positive with you are also important. Pick your friends wisely. Um, you know, pick friends that are going to help you and encourage you and motivate you and make you better as a human being, not ones that drag you down. Because your friends, they get inside your head too. You know, if you're hanging around Debbie Downer all day, next thing you know, you're going to be thinking like Debbie Downer. And you're going to be talking to yourself like Debbie Downer. And you're not going to do anything. Um, then you start believing you can't do something. As opposed to being around people that are winning and doing well. You know, not winning and most successful people, but just people that are just positive and love life and are passionate about what they do. Whether it's one thing or another, it doesn't matter. It's just, I think, uh, picking good friends, staying positive, and being your best friend you can to yourself. Because life is hard enough, man. Mm-hmm. Life is tough enough to get through and put a smile on your face without being around negative people and talking yourself down. So, you know, being around good people that are happy and able to be happy and put a smile on their face and tell you good job, hey, it's great to see you, and smile at you are all really important. And then you got to do the same thing to yourself. Okay. So, John, where can people find out more about you? Uh, YouTube.com slash fitness training by John J-O-N is my YouTube channel. And I'm posting a new video every Monday. And right now I'm doing a body weight training series that will go on for a few more weeks um, about how you can work out basically just using your own body weight as resistance, whether it's at the park or at home. Um, that's the series I got about, I think, nine videos on there right now doing that. Uh, that's what I'm currently working on, but I'll be doing more stuff on nutrition, Um you know, some stuff on local in- industry trends at trade shows. I got some stuff going on there. I go to different trade shows and profile different booths that are interesting to me um, for working out at home or at the gym. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I got some stuff on there, uh, some challenges on there from those shows. Uh, also, my website is fitnessontherun.com or fitnesstrainingbyjohn.com. They go to the same spot. And they can all find me there. Uh, Facebook.com slash fitness on the run and Twitter.com slash fitness on the run as well. Okay. So if you guys are listening and you're looking for a starting point, John's YouTube channel is probably a great spot. He just mentioned the body weight training series he's doing right now. So that's awesome. Thank you, Spencer, for having me. And um, yeah, love your site. You're doing awesome. Keep it Thanks, up. Man. Thank you. All right. Take care, brother. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All right. Hope you enjoyed that interview. As always, to hear more, go to bodyhack.com. Click the link to the blog. And if you know anyone with a good story, maybe they lost a bunch of weight, maybe they really know what they're talking about or they're doing some crazy thing that we'd probably be interested in, go ahead and send me an email, spencer at bodyhack.com. Until I see you guys next time, take care, have fun, train hard. That's it. Bye-bye.